Spring is here, but winter is spoiling the party. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about a wintry pattern returning to part of the country as we move through the first week of spring, so stick around for that. Then we're going to backtrack a little bit and talk about the cold that is currently here. Freeze warnings up for a lot of the southeast corner of the U.S. And then we're going to have your forecast for 72 hours out, show you high-resolution future radar and future temperatures for U.S. and Canada. Stick around in a couple of minutes. One one U.S. city is doing something extremely crazy. I'm going to blow your mind with this stat for one U.S. city, so stick around. Before we get into all that, though, if you want to stay updated on the weather as we venture into spring severe weather season and hurricane season especially, hit that subscribe button. Thank you to all the new subscribers. It's been awesome meeting you guys and chatting in the, in the comments post we are tuning in from and now we will get into it hit that thumbs up button if you find this content helpful all right system number one of a series of storms that roll through the northern tier of the country arrives thursday into friday you see it coming out of the canadian rockies around edmonton and calgary this little narrow strip this is our clipper system that slides through it's a fast moving narrow band of snow and you see that kind of takes aim on central minnesota and then works its way towards uh, parts of wisconsin into michigan and and then through the northern tier of the country and then exits out toward Maine. Clipper systems are notoriously hard to forecast, at least from that point out, uh, this far out anyway, at least where they are going to drop the heaviest amount of snow. Again, typically they're moisture starved. They're coming from the drier air from the Rockies of Canada and then slide on through. So we're going to be trying to pinpoint where exactly that narrow stripe of the heaviest snow falls. Bigger system then comes as we get into the weekend. Here we go Saturday into Sunday, and once again, taking aim on Minnesota. I want to show you some snowfall totals from the uh, upper Midwest as a whole for the season, and this is falling in areas that are seeing record or near record low snowfall amounts for the winter so far. So here we go. There's 4 o'clock on your Sunday, and you see some snow. Again, this is still far out, so it's not gospel where the heaviest snow is going to fall, but... The pattern appears right for some heavy snow somewhere in the Dakotas, Minnesota, parts of Iowa, and then into Wisconsin. We're going to be fine-tuning that as we get closer. So that is storm number two that kind of transitions into storm number three here. You see this big one riding up front and kind of wraps up here and sends some snow back on the northern side of this. And this kind of gives us a third round of snow in Minnesota parts of Iowa, and then parts of Wisconsin. And then we have this southern stream guy rolling up here. I think it's too warm along the I-95 corridor, but this is Friday, March 29th, and we have another system coming out, and you already see some more moisture coming into the Canadian Rockies and the Rockies of the United States. So we're going to get ourselves back into an active pattern. March is likely going to go out like a lion here with these several big storms rolling through. We're also going to have to watch for some southern and southern plains severe weather episodes as those bigger storms start to wind up, especially that one getting into the weekend. So we're going to be watching that closely. All right. So I mentioned you can't put too much stock in the models. Those snowfall amounts, again, you don't want to look at the snowfall amounts just yet. Windshield wiper effect, those are going to change and fluctuate drastically up until the event themselves. What you want to look at right now is, is the pattern there. And right now we do for a good upper Midwest Northern Plain snowstorm, you want to have the upper low pressure system riding the west coast of the united states well look at what we have here this is the upper level pattern this is the vorticity as we call it the spin in the atmosphere and here is our nice upper low hanging tight right on into the pacific now watch it pinwheel in kind of opens up a little bit there we go whoops i wanted the telestration there we go it opens up like that that elongated area of low pressure and then it wraps up and then closes back off. That's one of the things that you look for, a nice big closed low, negatively tilted. Negative tilt is just like this, where the trough, there's the trough right there, the dip in the jet stream, and there's our upper low, and it's tilted negatively back to the northwest and southeast. When those troughs are negatively tilted like that, it maximizes differences in temperature and pressure, and that's where we get those bigger storms to explode and can drop a lot of snow pending it's cold enough. It does look like we are going to have some colder air, uh, especially in parts of Minnesota. Again, there's going to be a fine line, that rain-snow line, but that is something that we fine-tune a little bit closer to the event. So, in terms of my excitement level for Minnesota, western Wisconsin, into northern Iowa, when it comes to 
Snow, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It does look like it is going to turn wintry. Again, it's not a slam dunk by any means, but the pattern is starting to look ripe. And if you're loving the snow, if you're a snow lover, if you want the snow, it's coming in spots that have not had many snowfall, any many snowstorms this year, and a whole lot of snow. Look at this on us in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Only 18 inches of snow. That puts us about two feet below normal. Minneapolis, 14 for the year. I've had a couple of comments on videos as well about, oh, we haven't had that much snow in Minneapolis. <laughs> Snowfall varies very significantly from location for one. And official measurements are taken on what's known as a whiteboard. So the National Weather Service or official spotters will let the snow fall a couple of inches, clean it off, and then let it go. So there's not as much compacting, not as much blowing. That's why you may see higher amounts at the official observing site rather than in your backyard so i wanted to clear that up madison we've actually done okay 32 inches of snow but that still puts us 14 inches below normal detroit we did not pick up 1.5 inches of snow we did pick up uh we are still 19 inches below normal syracuse new york 48 inches of snow i had a request to check uh, to take a look at that in the comments that puts us 70 inches just about below normal so that brings me to my mind-blowing stat. And those that are in Minnesota know how crazy of a winter it was on the cold and snowy side last year. That was courtesy of La Nina. We always talk about La Nina, El Nino on this channel. And if you like snow, if you like winter cold, if you like all that stuff, La Nina is your time in the upper Midwest and northern plains. This winter, though, the opposite happens in an El Nino. 19 inches of snow to date in Duluth. That is good enough so far for the least snowy winter on record last year to date through March 19th. And we could get more snow again, as we just saw. But last winter to date, we had 103 inches of snow in Duluth through March 19th. We would go on to have 140 inches of snow, which is the snowiest winter on record. So we're talking about back-to-back -back years. One year being the snowiest, the next that followed is the least snowy and again likely a lot of that is because of the la nina last year which is a ripe winter for the upper midwest and northern plains wednesday of course is the day that we are looking at and then we are talking about temperatures bottoming out in the 20s and 30s roanoke we're back to the 30s 40s in jacksonville 40s in orlando 38 in st louis 35 in Kansas City. Again, it is going to be much, much colder tomorrow morning in Florida. It will warm up a little bit from where we were this morning in the deep south, but nonetheless, it is still going to be cold. It is going to be jacket worthy. Uh, again, if you had your plants covered last night, might just want to keep them covered for one more night in the deep south. 40 degrees. Uh, this is going to be on Thursday now in Nashville. Look at that. Still very cold below the freezing mark in Roanoke. 20s from Detroit into Pittsburgh and in New York City. 20s again in Minneapolis, in Bismarck. We have some, a little bit of warmth hanging on in the North Gulf Coast, San Antonio in the 60s, Houston in the 60s, Boise, Idaho in the 40s. And then as we get into Friday, this is when we start to see some evidence here of some of that, that clipper system. And that's going to reintroduce some more cold. That's one of the roles of a clipper system is to kind of pave the way for the bigger system. It wraps in the cold from Canada. And then the other system that follows, as we saw the bigger one come Sunday uh, into the weekend, that is going to have enough cold air to play with and bring some snow to a part of the area. All right, so now I want to give you the North America, at least Canada, parts of northern Mexico, and U.S. view here of the high-resolution future radar over the next few days. So this is the rest of Tuesday, and we do have a little bit of snow. You see here, pinwheeling here from Toronto to Ottawa into Quebec. In Ramouski, Pittsburgh could see a few light snow showers. It's still going to be too warm on the I-95 corridor. How many times have I said that this winter for sure that we've just missed out on the cold? And that's one of the things that we talked about early in the season. El Nino does not mean a slam dunk winter for the I-95 corridor. I've had a lot of comments on videos recently that, hey, you said that we were going to get a bunch of snow in the Northeast. No, I said it was going to be wet in the Northeast. The cold was the question. And so that's the one thing. When you hear El Nino, you can't automatically assume that it's going to be a blockbuster winter. You get the big nor'easters that do this and roll up into the northeast and a lot of times do blast us with snow in the 95 corridor. But what's the number one ingredient for snow, guys? It's the cold. And that has been significantly lacking in the northeast for the past several winters. So it's been wet in the northeast but we have not taken advantage of the cold.
All right, that was my soapbox. All right, so here we go. Thursday into uh, Thursday morning, that's March 21st. Here comes our clipper system again. We also have some rain around Seattle. Next system for the south starts to materialize on Saturday, on Thursday as well around Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. That is going to take a trip across the Gulf of Mexico and then bring some crummy weather into Florida on Friday. Could have some strong thunderstorms out of the deal, depending upon where the heaviest part of this system goes. So we're going to be watching that closely from especially Orlando and Point South into South Florida. But you see some scattered thunderstorms as well from Atlanta back into Shreveport, New Orleans. Also on Friday, the northern part of that system could have some snow from Madison into Detroit. And then that's the one that rolls right on up and then out of here in the weekend to make way for the bigger one that you can kind of see the heavy rain there coming in on the west coast that eventually works its way up here and then slides into the upper midwest again exact track to be determined be careful of the posts you see on social media those numbers that you see and there could be some impressive numbers over the next week to 10 days they're going to fluctuate i'm confident that we're going to get a snowstorm still have to pinpoint who gets the heaviest amount so if you've been waiting for some snow guys it's coming to part of the upper Midwest as we get into the end of this work week and then into the upcoming weekend, maybe even continuing in early next week. Alrighty, guys, thank you a ton for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you want to stay updated on the weather as we round out winter that doesn't want to go away, that never really started for a lot of people, California, Sierras, I'm looking at you. We've had a great winter. Some people have, but most have not if you like the snow. Hit that subscribe button, post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we will catch you next time.